Well, before we do a quick review of our polar and uh, parametric chapters, I wanted to hit one more topic related to series, and that's the error involved when we use a polynomial. Uh, notice I'm not, I didn't say series, I'd say just a finite polynomial uh, to approximate a certain function value. And uh, basically there's two types of approaches. Number one, when you see the word error, or you see the question kind of moving in that direction, you just keep your fingers crossed and you hope and pray that it's an alternating series. And as long as it's an alternating series, we're going to focus on the first omitted term. And we've done a really nice job of that lately. Now, the alternative to that, if it's not an alternating series, we're still going to be okay. There's no need to panic whatsoever. We're going to be all right. We're going to then go use Lagrange's theorem. And again, it, and it's very closely associated with the idea, the idea of the first omitted term. It's basically the next term of that Taylor uh, polynomial expansion, if you look at the nth term. And so we're going to focus on both of those things tonight. Okay, we're going to warm up with our alternating series, the friendlier one. And what I've given up here in, in purple is a kind of, uh, just a general form of a particular series. And then I started to expand it out and I listed uh, the first five terms of that particular series. Now, here's what I want to do. I want you to approximate f of one-third with the first three terms, for starters, okay? So we could say f of one-third is not equal to. Um, I did have the equal sign earlier because I had a dot, dot, dot at the end. Um, but now I'm going to use the approximation sign. I'm going to say one-half times one-third. And then I've got, uh, I guess, really another one-half times one-ninth. And then I've got three-eighths. Whoops, that should have been a minus sign. My bad. Minus one half. Then plus three eighths and one twenty seventh. Okay. So here's what we got. And then I could, you know, throw that in my calculator and I'd say that, you know, those three terms have a sum of blank. And let's just, for our argument's sake, let's call that alpha A. And of course, now the question is um, you know, how close is my alpha A to the real answer, uh, f of one third? And so we're going to say, well, the maximum error for an alternating series is the absolute value um, of that first omitted term. So I'm going to grab the first omitted term, which was this rascal right here. I'm disregarding the negative sign. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug a one-third into that term right there. And that's going to give me 1 over 81. And uh, let's see, whatever happens, uh, you know, whatever 16 times 81 is, that's going to represent my maximum error. So basically what we're saying is when you add the first three terms together, the sum of those first three terms is off by no more than that next term right there. Before we do graduate to Lagrange, I want to go over some common notation that's common to both of these. And basically, how do you know, a lot of times they're not going to print the actual word error a lot of times, okay? What they're going to do is they're going to use notation like this. They're going to say f of a certain value minus the polynomial. And I think we used a third degree on that last problem in the first three terms. And, and the, the difference between those is the error. Okay, and they're slapping absolute values on there because the sign of the difference doesn't really matter. They just want to know how far away it is. And so, of course, you've got the f represents the exact measure. The p represents our approximated measure. And, of course, then the difference between those is the error. So just a lot of times they're not going to print that word. We're, they want us to uh, recognize this notation as meaning error, and we're going to have to build off of that. Now, for every other Taylor uh, polynomial that's not alternating, we're going to fall back on this Lagrange theorem. And basically, let's just reiterate the formula and go over some of the basics and, and just identify what all these crazy letters mean. Again, we're going to start with the notation error max. The maximum error is guaranteed to be less than or equal to the n plus first derivative evaluated as z divided by n plus 1 factorial times x minus c to the n plus 1 power. And so there's your formula, and I want you to compare that. When you expand out a general Taylor series that's centered at C, what's the nth term look like? We say the nth term is the nth derivative evaluated at its center divided by n factorial uh, quantity x minus C to the nth power. So you can see the comparison. Uh, the, the two big differences is we're going one term beyond the nth term. And the other big difference is that um, we're evaluating the derivative at Z now, not the center specifically. It could actually be the center, but not. Uh, it doesn't have to be. So... With that in mind, 
let's go ahead and, and we'll kind of throw that away. Um, let's identify all these crazy letters. The Z is probably my favorite. Um, the Z is a mysterious unknown number for the most part. And it floats somewhere between X and, whoops, that's a less than or equal to C. Now, of course, C is where the polynomial happens to be centered at. If it's McLaurin, it's zero. But other than that, it's typically like a one, a two, or a three. X is the value that we are approximating. You know, whether it's well, whether we're approximating f of one half or f of one third, that's what x represents. And then, of course, um, you know, all the n plus ones I think for speak for themselves. And so, the, in the bottom case is this whole quantity, everything that's in absolute values. We're trying to create a not, like the worst case scenario. I can't stress that enough. We're trying to make that rascal as big as possible. And when I refer, when I say rascal, I'm referring to this whole quantity here. In other words, um, what, like when we talk about the n plus first derivative evaluated as z, go as big as possible so that when we get done and we present an answer, we're saying this is the biggest the air can be. We know it can't be any bigger than that. So let's dive in and maybe try a few. So here's an absolutely priceless multiple choice question, and we'll kind of sort through it here piece by piece. Now they said function f is approximated with a fourth degree Taylor polynomial. So right there, as soon as you read fourth degree, I want you to say to yourself, the n value is 4, which then implies we're going to use the fifth degree term for all of our work. And it's, uh, um, they said about 1, so your center is 1. What else they got here? Now this is very interesting. They said the maximum value, this is very helpful, of the fifth derivative between 1 and 3 is 0.01. In other words, the fifth derivative is never bigger than 0.01 within that interval, x equals 1 to x equals 3. Uh, and then they said the maximum error incurred using this approximation to compute f of 3. So when they said, as soon as they said f of 3 right there, I knew that the x value they're trying to approximate is 3. So let's take a look at this. The maximum error is guaranteed to be less than. So I'm substituting a 4 for all the n. So this is actually the fifth derivative evaluated at some mysterious z. And that's divided by 5 factorial. And let's see, we need 3 minus 1 to the 5th power. Not bad, huh? That's not too bad. Just take your time, walk your way through it. And let's see here. Now, z, we define z can be anything between those two values right there. So it's got to be somewhere between 1 and 3. And conveniently up here in the directions, they talked about the fact that between 1 and 3, the 5th derivative is never bigger than 0.01. So I'm going to say 0 0.01 divided by 5 factorial times 2 to the 5th. Throw that bear in your calculator, and I ended up with 0 0.00267. Not bad, huh? Well, here's one of those rascally questions that asks like three questions within just part A. So first things first, let's break it down and make sure we address each question. They want to know a fourth degree polynomial, Maclaurin that is, so it's centered at zero for e to the x. So we say, okay, that's a piece of cake. The fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial for e to the x is just one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial. Okay. The next thing, is, so always remind yourself that the fourth degree is most likely going to have five terms unless one, a couple of them are zeros. Now use your polynomial to approximate e to the first. We could say e to the, or I should say e to the negative one is, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to substitute a one into all these x values. And I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to let, uh, we're just going to assume or pretend we threw that in our calculator. We got an answer. And again, for time's sake, let's call that alpha A, whatever the sum of those five terms was. And then the last thing they want me to do in just part A is to use the Lagrange air bound to find the maximum error for all x values that are less than or equal to 1. And so here's what I'm thinking. Based on the polynomial I just used, we're going to say that the n value was 4. We're going to say that um, it's centered at 0. Uh, the x values can be anything absolute value-wise that are less than or equal to 1. And then z can be anything from, let's say, 0 to 1. All right, so the air max is going to be less than or equal to, we need the fifth derivative again because it's a 4 plus 1 evaluated as z all over 5 factorial. And then I'm going to say, um, what's going to make this as big as possible? I'm going to let, now technically x could be anything between negative 1 
and positive 1, but what's going to make this rascal as big as possible? I'm going to let x equal 1 minus the center raised to the fifth power. Now, I took a look at the fifth derivative of our function is still e to the x, and if you were allowed to plug in a 0, a 1, or anything in between, what's going to make it as big as possible? Well, since e to the x is an increasing function, we're going to use the right endpoint, and I'm going to say e to the first over 5 factorial, and of course 1 to the fifth is 1. I plug that in my calculator, and going three decimal places, I got, I think it's 0 0.023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 0 0.023 is the maximum error according to three decimal places. Now, we haven't necessarily talked about part B. They said give an interval such that uh, e to the negative 1 is guaranteed to lay within. All right, so here's what I said. I said e to the negative one. Now, my because my error could be could go in either direction. My it could my answer my approximation could be a little lower, could be a little high. So we're going to say e to the negative one is somewhere in between. I'm going to say alpha a plus my maximum error or alpha a minus my maximum error, and whatever those values turn out to be is the interval within which e to the negative one has to fall. Again, quite a bit of work here, and this is going to be our, our last problem for the night, and hopefully we'll be able to grade ourselves out pretty high by the time we're done. Okay, the first things first, they want me to write the third degree Taylor polynomial, so I'm just going to kind of write out my basics here. P sub 3 of x is going to be, let's see, it's centered at 5, so I'm just thinking, you know what, it's going to be f of 5 plus f prime of 5, quantity x minus 5. Got a whole lot of 5s flying around. And then watch out for this little bear trap. That, that term has to be divided by 2 factorial, x minus 5 squared. And then I think we got to get one more term in here. We got the third derivative evaluated at 5 divided by 3 factorial times x minus 5. Ah, can I squeeze it in? Raise to the third. All right. So we'll clean that up a little bit. And we talked about the fact that that alone does not give me credit. I've actually got to plug in the specific values for all those f primes, etc f of 5 was a 6, and f prime was an 8, quantity x minus 5, certainly no need to distribute that 8, I think we know that, 30 divided by 2 is going to give me a 15, quantity squared, and then last but not least, 48 divided by 6, I believe is going to give me 8, and then quantity x minus 5 to the third power, so there it is, there's my third degree polynomial, that's my part A, we'll change colors, use your answer in part A to estimate 5.2, what's the maximum possible error? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I think we all could say that f of 5.2, use your approximation sign, and then plug in your 5.2, use some calculator to clean it up. We'll call that alpha A. What's the maximum possible error? All right, let's see if we can walk through this. Now, unfortunately, it's not an alternating series, so I can't just cut to the chase in that sense. I'll tell you what, probably the most insightful thing is going to be this statement right here, that the fourth derivative is guaranteed to be smaller than 75 uh, over the interval 5 to 5.2. So here's the deal. Let's start, uh, let's see, what degree did we use? We said we used a degree of 3, so my n is a 3. My I was centered at 5. What value did we attempt to approximate? We attempted to approximate 5.2, so that's your x value. Now, once you write that down, we're going to say that this mysterious z can float between 5 and 5.2. It could be anything within that interval. And Lagrange says, uh, if n is 3, I need the fourth derivative evaluated as c all over 4 factorial. And then I need my x minus my c, so it's going to give me 0.2 raised to the fourth power. Now, remember, this fourth derivative, we don't know what the fourth derivative is specifically as a function. But we are guaranteed that that quantity right there, that fourth derivative, is never going to be bigger than 75 within our special interval. So I'm instantly going to say 75 divided by 4 factorial times 0.2 raised to the fourth power. Let's throw it in our calculator and see what we get. I ended up with 0 0.001. Uh, I have to confess that I'm using my cell phone calculator here, so I hope I type that in right. My fat fingers don't quite always hit the buttons just right. But anyway, when I plugged 75 divided by 4 factorial times 0.2 to the fourth, I got 0 0.001. So hopefully I'm in the ballpark, and that's my maximum error. Let's go ahead and look at the last couple pieces here. Uh, similar to the last problem, they said, hey, can you find an interval within which f of 5.2 is guaranteed to fall within? And so I'm going to take a similar approach. We're going to cheat just a little bit. We're going to say that um, f of 5.2, the real value, has got to be within uh, a plus 0.001. And on the other end, a minus 0 0.001. Now, I don't quite have the a in front of me, so you know, adding or subtracting 0 0.001, I don't have that in front of me, but I think we can kind of see where we're going with part d. They said, um, how come f of 5.2 can't equal 8.254? And 
I think you kind of know the answer to that. 8.254 doesn't fall within this particular interval right here. Either it's going to be a whisker too big or it's going to be a whisker too small and it's not going to quite fall within that interval and so according to Lagrange's we can guarantee that it'll never equal 8.254.